I want to, you to think of the interviews I host for my podcast, um, like this one, as if they were, I don't know, let's say an audition. What I would like to know is what, let's say, the 15 minutes pre or my interviews should look like. And I say 15 minutes because I don't know exactly the time I should spend warming up my voice before a conversation. So, you know what? Two questions. For how long okay. should I warm up my voice before an interview? And what should I be doing during this warm up? Okay. So, how long should you be warming up your voice before an interview, before a presentation? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. I would say definitely 15 minutes. Def, um, anything beyond anything beyond an hour or 45 minutes is probably a bit excessive. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I would say this also depends upon how healthy your voice is to begin with. Mm. Now, provided that we are feeling so well and healthy, yeah, 15 minutes to 30 minutes is going to be perfect. If we're feeling under the weather, and you're feeling a little thick or a little hoarse, you probably want to add a little more time there to encourage some stretching. But ultimately, we can live in that realm of about 15 to 30 minutes. Mm. We'll call it 20 minutes to be even more specific. Cool. So let's call this a 20 minute warm up. What that's going to look like can, can differ. So say if you have to speak to a large group. Okay. We want to make sure we're taking care of the three zones of the voice. Those three zones are breathing, phonation, and resonance. Mm. Now let's start with the breathing here. Breathing, we want to make sure our lower abdomen muscles, our lower back, our sides, basically all the muscles that make up your core are ready and active. I'm not, we want to avoid any kind of crunch feeling or a plank feeling, but there is some strength involved. So a breathing exercise could be as simple as a slow inhale through the nose to capacity, and then a long hiss out for the complete duration of the breath. Mm. And for fun, to get even more methodical about this, you could time yourself. You could say, ooh, I made it about 15 seconds Let's try it twice more going for 20 seconds and then 25 seconds. You can work this way all the way up to a minute. Probably no real need for that, but it's fun to keep that practice going so that you're always increasing and you keep a, a record of it. But that's always great for me. It gets your body ready. It wakes up those core muscles, first of all, the expansion muscles, as well as the compression muscles of the core. And it also gets your body used to letting out a, a fixed amount of air consistently so that we don't feel like we're running out of breath or <laughs> that we're uneven in the exhale. We want an even inhale, even exhale. And just to answer this, a lot of people ask, do I breathe in through my nose or through my mouth? The mouth is faster. The nose is more relaxed. Mm -hmm. So when singing, chances are we're going to have to use the mouth more often than if we're speaking. If we're speaking, there's no real need to rush. And in fact, if you feel like you need to rush, that's, that's a weird voice in your head telling you, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And that's the voice we need to quell. We'll work on that in speech. But anyway, so the breathing, yes, we want to make sure that breath is grounded as low as we can. So your listeners, if you want to do that again, that's in through the nose and then out on a long kiss. Mm. It's fantastic. Awesome. So the second zone that phone nation so but this is I'm, where I'm, oh yeah I'm gonna in interrupt you really quick. sure of i course. have this notion that and i'm not sure if this is what you're going to talk about but what do you say for nation i always called um tonality and what you start when you say resonance i always thought about intensity so, uh, and you can correct me because I'm pretty sure I'm totally wrong right now. But for me, oh. it was how high or low your voice goes. And intensity was on how much you can, um, oh, the word, project uh, voice. 
how much you can project in a, in a I don't know, like a large room, so to say. Oh, uh, sure. That to me, it, it's not wrong. And this is something we run into when we're describing something that we can't see or really put our finger on is that we end up with lots of different vocabulary. Hmm. What I'm describing with phonation is the functionality of your vocal folds. Like this is a purely removing all quality from it. First of all, the quality to me falls under the resonance typically. So what you're talking about intensity that can actually be a part of this phonation. Okay. Because the intensity, like trying to project the voice, that is a function primarily, or I should say, firstly, it's a, um, it's a functionality of the phonation. Yeah. Be so if we imagine our vocal folds as a pair of scissors, or if you were to take your, your pointer and your middle finger and make a little scissor action, that is kind of what your vocal folds look like if we were to see them mm. inside your larynx. So they're connected where your knuckles are. That's similar to what the front of the vocal folds would be. Mm -hmm. And then the back where they come apart, that's how the backs of the vocal folds work. So it's not vocal cords where we think of a string elongated and then plucking the string. No, it's actually that action. Those folds come together when we speak. Ha. Uh, Ah, if I feel the air pass through and I bring the folds closer and closer together and bring my fingers closer together, I'm simulating my vocal folds coming together and touching. Mm. Hi, hi, hello everyone, good morning. That sensation. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, part of a great warm up for this to get people really accustomed is to feel a glottal attack. It sounds more intense than it actually is, but. It's the pressing together of the vocal folds and then allowing them to pop open. Quite the opposite of what we just did with hi. This would be I, I. Yeah. We feel that little hit. Yeah. So it's the chords touching and closing. A lot of people have difficulty with this because we've connected a heavy exhale with a lot of our speaking. Really, we want these two to work in tandem. I, I, hi, I, I. Like even the glottal attack, we want to soften that ultimately, but it's a great way to wake up your voice okay. and to practice the compression. Yeah. So if you're, you've done your breathing, I would say, ah, 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 just little touches, just little touches to wake up those closure muscles and get your vocal cords working. Now to get into that fun part though, that you were talking about the resonance, this is where we get the cherry on top. This is the whipped cream and cherry on top of our vocal Sunday. So this we can deal. Oh, to circle back though, I want to make sure that we touch on intensity. What you were saying, how to take over the room with your voice. Yeah. The degree to which we press together our vocal cords can help increase the volume. Think of it like if we were clapping with your two hands, and we have the whole hand clapping. That would be the full mass, a very strong speaking voice where I am speaking quite aggressively, but trying to make sure the people in the back of the theater can hear me. Yeah. Versus if I only clap two fingers, it's a much smaller sound and it's more my indoor voice, so to speak, as we'll tell the kids. Yeah. yeah. Same principle. The full mass of the folds hitting creates the big sound, the big intense sound. And then the thinner vocal folds are going to make the smaller. So you can feel that with, ah, like, oh, I found my keys. The opera singer finds his keys. Ah, that feeling versus the, um, the regular person finds their keys. Ah, there they are. Ah, opera singer. Ah, hello, good morning versus, oh, hi, good morning. It's good to see you. So yeah, you can feel that compression that will work. Working on that comes down to practicing that glottal attack so much. Yeah. Now, again, all things in moderation. I don't want to push anyone to do something they feel uncomfortable with. It can feel tight at first. We're working muscles and coordination. So if it feels uncomfortable, you don't have to do it. Lighten it up. Otherwise, moving on to that third zone, the resonance. This is where things get fun because resonance is describing where the air goes. 
So it starts in zone one around our core. We breathe in, it passes through the vocal folds. Ah, they vibrate. And then where the air goes after it passes the vocal folds determines everything. So if we send it out the mouth, we get a lot of what we call oral resonance. The air is passing out of the mouth. Ah, ha, ha. This gets into yelling, we do this. It can be um, people who talk right out of their mouth. Kind of, you might have a little bit of a cold or something. Mm, like um, a muscle nose noise. Yes, yeah. yes. Versus the complete opposite of that would be passing everything through the nose, where it's almost hard to understand. Um, this is, I always think of the old um, operator sound, mm, hello, operator. Yeah. Like a lot of weird voices like that. Um, that is not, there's no sound that we make that is 100% either one. So whenever someone has a nasal voice or someone has too much mouth resonance, what you're hearing is a slight imbalance and that is it. So a lot of our work in speech and in singing is finding that balance. So something that we'll play with if someone has way too much mouth resonance, indicators of that would be you have to talk really loud. You might get hoarse quite often. You feel dry. There's a touch of rasp sometimes in your speaking voice. Then you need more nose resonance, more nasal resonance, more air passing up into your nose. I promise you, you will not, not sound nasal. But in the exercises, you will sound nasal and that's okay because we're balancing. So something I like to do is the NG sound mm -hmm. or a hum. Hmm. Hmm. The hum is probably more accessible. The NG feels really weird, but it's, if you, <laughs> it really does. So, but if you take the word sing, for instance, S-I-N-G, sing would be a great way to warm up your voice and balance yourself. Yeah. Sing. And you could even try taking what you have to say in a presentation and speak it through that NG. And it sounds really weird when you do. It sounds really weird when you do, but you start to feel those vibrations. And much like a bat uses echolocation in a cave, you start to get the lay of the land, or you can feel the internal structures of your nasal passages, of your pharynx or the back of your throat. You start to understand your own voice with that. So helpful. Now, if you have way too much nose in your sound, if you sound nasal, chances are, there's a little too much tension around where the phonation happens. Your throat probably feels a little tight from time to time. Yeah. You might have a little excessive vocal fry. You might feel like, uh, I, I can barely breathe or I, there's a lot of breath pressure building up. And plus people tell you, ooh, you sound nasal. What would really be helpful here is the good old fashioned pinching of the nose or speaking as though you have uh, a yawn in your throat, mm -hmm. just to relax all of these muscles in the throat. Oh, so this, we, uh, with the children that I teach sometimes, we call this the brown bear voice. Oh, hello, I sure wish I had some honey. <laughs> or we could even say, uh, the opera singer finds his keys, but quietly, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Or you can think of um, a cooking video showing your final plated, beautiful dish of gnocchi. Ah, oh, delicious. You know, it's your, your PPS voice, yeah. so to speak. Ah, oh, ah, oh, hmm. Um, yeah. And then a fun exercise would be to take your, the, the hum and experiment back and forth, like trying to send all the sound to the nose versus all the sound to the mouth. Mm -hmm. There are tons of exercises, tons of ways to get about this. And some things are going to feel wrong to you and some are going to feel right. Stick with those ones that feel like they agree with what your body wants to do. Mm. That's the rule of thumb here. Yeah.